Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Southbound Fishing. Today we're going to be talking to you about pouring some some rad shads, except it's in the new exclusive color and new product line, the Rad Bass. Uh, some people have been wondering why I'm, I am releasing separate separate products for the same thing. It's because of the color and eye combinations. Um, you can order any kind of color in the Rad Shad. It's really up to you. I have a lot of colors. I mean, I, I have honestly almost every color you you could want. I can match here. But I also have you know tons of colors on the website. Um, anything from single colors, dual colors, that's a new prototype color I'm working on. Um, you could you know the opportunities are endless but when it gets into the three color pours it does really get hard uh, to, to make those baits because I'm using three different cups of plastic um, three different sets of glitter it, it all factors in so that's why these baits are a different product the, the price is higher I'm not gonna sugarcoat it the price is a little bit higher but that's because there's much more labor involved as you can see in the video I have to hand pour the belly then hand pour the back and get those perfect, make sure those are lined up, and then shoot the middle color, then heat up another totally different batch of plastic, put eyes on them, and dip them, and then we're done. So I have to do that for every single bait, and that's six baits in a pack. So that's why the price is different. Um, but I know you guys wanted these crazy custom colors and crazy, extremely detailed and, and very quality match matched colors to these bait fish that you fish for whether it be the gill or the new the new bait which what we're going to be doing today is the cannibal which is the baby bass pattern because mainly when you're fishing with the with the rat shad you're, it's, you're going for bass of course you can go for pike you can go for walleye you can go for smallmouth and you know gar all that kind of stuff with this bait except most of the time my main market is bass so i'm going to name it the cannibal because of that um let me get my cups lined up let me get everything working, and then uh, and then we'll get pouring. So stay tuned, guys. I'm just going to... I was working with this Key West color. That's why this has been in the cup. I'm working on that new prototype color. It's a Key West bottom and a really cool top. We're going to see if that works out. If that works, then it'll most likely be released for the 2013 season. So let me put all my chunks away in my... in my... Um, in my scrap drawer. Just getting pretty full right now, so. And then we'll see if I have any left over of the cannibal color. We have the top left over. That's the top of the cannibal color, by the way, guys. It's like a it's like a watermelon red flake kind of color. And we can we can find the same chunk I normally use for the the um for the middle color. You can find that somewhere in here. I know I got it somewhere. There's tons of plastic in here, by the way. There's honestly tons. So there we are. Got it. And all that is is just a nice uh, a nice black with a green flake in there. So clean off the spoon. Um, start cutting this guy out. I'll show you what I do with this. Just take a chunk of plastic. There's an eye on there. Take a chunk of plastic. You can either use normal scissors, or I also have these these tools down here. Let me grab them. There it is. It's the I think it's like salad. It's like a, for salad tossing, but I really really like them. Um, I like them because they have they're they're big and look at them. They have that that dual blade, which is really really cool in here. I don't know what happened. There used to be a spring right there. Oh well. Um, so I'll just take it and what I'll do is I'll just cut it that way. Cut it that way. Cut it one more time. And it's like we have this big nice fanned out thing with this little holder strip on top. It's just a way to cut it out. Cut your stuff out. Efficiently and get it in the small chunks. And when you cut it, you have those little small chunks. And I just cut these with normal scissors. And then once you get up to the last little bit, which was holding it, you just shred it like you normally would. You can also use a, a, a meat grinder. Uh, 
I've seen people use cheese graters for this. A lot of cool stuff. And so it's now just a bunch of little chunks of plastic in there. Hit it with a fresh dose of the crystal, can you crystal clear? Mix it all in so that it does have some fresh chemical going in there. And then a little bitty Caney Creek heat stabilizer. Mix it up one more time. And we'll leave that right there because we don't need to heat that just yet. And there's that, there's the top color of the cannibal. It's a nice watermelon red. Real good color. And since this is such a big chunk, all I'll do is just take this top layer off, this little top excess from the cup. And then you can just take this whole thing, hit your cup. This is a cool little cool little trick. Hit your cup. A little bit of heat stabilizer. And then if you take your if you take like a paintbrush or something and just spread it all around in there, it actually gets nice and oily down there, so you can just slide this thing in there and it fits just perfectly. And it'll heat really evenly that way. There won't be any air pockets. So that's a cool thing. And then you just take this whole thing and just trim it up. The whole thing's either sealing it down really shut against the Pyrex, or you can or you can chunk it up. Either way, I like the chunked up method, but the way that I just did works well if you have just a, a big chunk of plastic. Then you do that. A little bit of fresh plastic. Always do that. Never never use just straight old stuff. It's just not good. And then we're ready to go on that. I'm not going to heat that up just yet though. Got a little bit extra. Let's put that over there. Use this Pyrex cup. And um, with this pearl, with the pearl belly that I use, I don't ever reheat any pearl. Because I'll show you. I have a couple of chunks in here of reheated pearl. That's what starts up, ends up happening. Is you get this yellow. And of course, I could take this and, and easily morph it into a green pumpkin, change it into a watermelon, you know, change it into a black kind of color, all that kind of stuff. Because the, the yellow, is, it's very light yellow. It's almost clear. It just has a very slight tint of yellow, so this wouldn't be good. This would, when this is what would happen if you keep reheating pearls. So, all the pearls I use are straight fresh plastic. Most of the most of the baits that I make are out of straight fresh plastic. We're just gonna be shooting two baits, just for the sake of time. So I'm only gonna heat up a tiny little bit. Usually, do a half cup shot. Huh? Heat stabilizer goes in there. Mix that up. This thing out of there, get this thing out of the way. Uh, and then so we can heat this up first because this is the belly color. So straight cla straight plastic guys. Heat this up. I'll go for a minute thirty and then we'll see how it comes out. Uh, just took out this plastic and as you can see it still has some of that fresh plastic at the bottom. But this but this stuff on the top is pretty much perfect. So what you do is you mix up the others. You just mix it. Mixing is just the key to hand pouring, it's just mixing. So it's totally clear. You're gonna get bubbles. As you can see, there's bubbles in there. But the cool thing about these bubbles is they're not permanent. They aren't permanent at all. Once you heat it and get it to the right temperature, they're gone. So if you see all those bubbles, don't be alarmed. You can cook them right out. We're gonna put them right back in the microwave. And also, I'm gonna show you a new trick once all this stuff comes out of the microwave. I'm not gonna show you again because I'm just heating up scraps, so. The next little clip will be of me actually getting the stuff poured. As you can see, crystal clear, no bubbles. I told you they'd cook out. We're gonna add colorant now and get ready to shoot this thing. Okay guys, now as you can see I have the swim or the um, the rad shad cavities lined up. Take my pearl. Just gonna pour it right in there. It's not actually the biggest belly I have. Um, I feel it about three fourths of the way, not all the way, of the belly part. Pour this one too. You are going to get a little bit of bubbles. It happens. Hand pouring, you get bubbles. So, but they're so small. But here's one really cool thing you can do: take an aim and flame or a light or anything, get it lit, and just slowly move it across that top. And what will happen is hot air rises, right? Simple physics. And the heater will heat the air inside the bubbles, or the lighter will heat the air inside the bubbles, bring them up to the top, 
and then what it does is it melts that top of the bubble and just gets rid of gets rid of all the bubbles. It's really cool. Just zap them out, zap them right out of there. Okay, we'll pour the watermelon next, and then we'll shoot the black, heat them up, put them eyes on them, and dip them. Okay, we're just getting the watermelon out of the microwave. There's some parts that aren't heated, but that really actually does not matter. As long as that little, that part that you want is heated. As long as there's enough to pour, pretty much what I'm saying. And then you just get this. Let me just move it down so you can see a little bit better. And then I just pour the back. And that watermelon, that nice, nice looking watermelon red. And this color is red, big red flake, small red flake, a slight tint of moss green, and also a little bit of .40 black. So, and then of course it's got some red highlight in there as well. It's just a cool color. And we're gonna do the aim and flame trick one more time. Run it over and just zap all those bubbles, just in case there are any. And now we have two clean halves of a bait. We're gonna get that black heated up and shoot the final bit. Put it in there for a minute 30 and we'll see what happens. Alright guys, there's the black with some moss green flake in there. Make sure the mold's all clean, everything's cool. Looks good, so we're just going to take it up, clamp it. It's big old metal clamps now. Clamp her down really tight. No flashing at all. Get our Caney Creek injector primed up here. One last swirl. We only need a little bit of plastic since this we're just filling out the uh, middle and the tail. And then what I'll do is I'll just hug the mold. And basically what that is, it's just holding pressure, making sure every cavity is full, making sure everything works right, you know. Of course, to pre prevent zombie baits, which are baits that have hollow heads or hollow tails, you fill a little bit of plastic right back in the sprue hole, clear it out, and then just pop the tab off. And then once the bait, once this top part is cool, the bait's cool, we can pull it out and do the rest of the process of it. So, thanks for watching. All right, everything's dry, everything's cooled. We're gonna mold these baits. Show you how good these things look. I, just, I do believe this is one of my best patterns. There you go. That's why you hug the mold. I didn't hug it for long enough just because I was doing the, the video. I didn't want to take a ton of time out of it. But normally I hug it for like 10 seconds. So that one didn't fill, but that's fine. Look at that bait. There it is. The Rad Bass. Um, the Rad Bass, aka the Cannibal. Good looking bait. We're gonna get it dipped with eyes and uh, show you how it looks. So, let me get my eyes out really quickly. I use Caney Creek eyes, of course. And I use red for these rad bass. I just like the way red looks. So, let me zoom in real quick on that bait. Let's see what I'm doing to it. Sorry about that. Okay. Take one of the eyes off the sheet. Place it right on there. Perfect. Flip it over, do the same thing. In the exact same space. As you can see, they're aligned perfectly. Well, that one's a little bit lower. Let me adjust that. There it is. The rad bass. Looks way better in the sun. I'm in my dark shop right now, so it's not going to look the best. And then I'll just dip it in this pearl plastic to give that head a little bit of pearl shine on it.
we'll heat that up, get this thing, get this thing dipped. I'll take a lot of close-up pictures of it, and um, and I'll tell you how to order and everything. So thanks for watching, guys. All right, guys, dip the bait in that pearl. As you can see, it doesn't make any. It doesn't like. It doesn't like make the the black or any of that pearl. It just the pearl's so light, and it's just such a thin layer that it just works. It just simply works. It's a great bait. Uh, it really is. It's really cool because there's so many things you can do with this tail. The tail action on swim baits is everything. The body shape, you know, it's a big deal. You want something that has a nice body shape, but that tail action is what absolutely sets the thing off. And it, and I pour it with a harder formula. Uh, Caney Creek, Jason at Caney Creek, he sells, he sells two versions of this mold. He sells a version of this mold with a uh, with the swim tail, which is a thinner tail. But I, I chose I chose the thick tail. It thumps. It really does thump. You can feel it. You can feel it on your rod. It doesn't just curl like a, a grub. It's not a weightless feeling. It does produce a little bit of thump. So that's why it's so good for swim jigs and so good for weighted hooks and fish head spins. And uh, it's just it's it's just a real versatile bait. I didn't think it would be as versatile as as it was when I when I first started fishing this thing. So that's why I've come up with different colors. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys are fishing in smaller waters that don't carry shad, that don't carry shiners, um, or trout, anything like that. So I have to, you know, I have to, I have to create baits for you guys that, that will work. And this bait will work. It looks like a baby bass. If you're fishing for bass, you're fishing for a fish that eats baby bass. If you know that there's bass in the lake you're fishing in, you know that there's baby bass. It's not a question of, well, I wonder if there's shad in here. I wonder if this color will work. This is a standard color. It's a detailed color. There's a lot of companies that just throw a watermelon with a pearl belly out there and say, oh, baby bass. But I wanted this to be better. Bass, as you know, bass sometimes have red eyes. If you if you prefer a different color eye, I can easily do that. I have almost all colors of eyes. But I, I standardized, I placed them with a red eye. Um, and it has that black lateral line. And also, it'd be, it'd be cool That'd be a cool bait, right? That, I mean, I think that'd be a cool bait with just that lateral line, but the tail is black too. That's what really accents it. Bass are not a light fish. Bass are not a mullet. They're not. They're not a shad. Those are bright fish. Blueback herring. They're bright fish. They have a lot of bright colors. They stand out in the water. It's hard to see a bass sometimes in the water. They have a really dark back. Um, their bellies are white, but they keep close to the bottom sometimes, and you just can't tell that that that's that. It's that white belly. So this is a darker. It's a darker profile because it has that smoky black tail. It's just a cool, it's just an overall, just a really cool concept for a bait that I wanted to do for a while. And I can finally introduce it to you guys. I came up with this formula that I'm happy with. So, thanks for watching this video. And of course, you can order the Cannibal today at the link in the description. It will be right there. You can pay with PayPal credit or debit card. So, thanks for watching. All baits are made in the shop. There's no outsourcing. There's nothing like that. Um, and order the cannibal today. Thanks, guys.